He called him as a dark horse in the offseason. Is this going to continue? Can we count on BMW continuing to show up and show out here? Right here. Talk about the Monday night football matchup. It's a primetime matchup with the Los Angeles Chargers hosting the Las Vegas Raiders in a 52 and a half point over under. The Chargers are favored by three and a half, but you would be in our favor if you hit that like button, hit that subscribe over on the YouTube channel and help us grow the channel and continue putting out fresh fantasy football content daily to help you dominate your weekly game. We start with the Las Vegas Raiders, guys, and we got to start with the QB1 behind the league's best offense. That's right. I'm talking about. Derek Carr. That's right, right? We're talking a lot about Derek Carr because of how well that offense has started, Travi. And you had asked, is Derek Carr a quarterback one now? Well, technically, he's a back-end one as the QB9. But honestly, to me, that's a little bit kind of surprising and maybe a little bit concerning as well to have the league's fastest and number one offense right now creating the number nine overall quarterback. So it looked a little bit why, and I think it has to do with the touchdown upside Derek Carr brings to the table or lack thereof. Now, in the last five seasons, Derek Carr has hit four passing touchdowns a single time. Right now, he's coming in at two passing touchdowns per game. He doesn't have any history of eclipsing that, and I would have thought we'd see at least a little bit of an elevation in this hot start from that touchdown side of it as well. It, to me, it's a little bit peculiar that he's throwing for more yards and this offense is moving better, but he's not getting any more passing touchdowns and he doesn't have any real rushing upside. Love the yards, but I need to know that he's at least capable of those four to five passing touchdown kind of days in a modern era. You just kind of need to be able to get to that point. Like, you know, we used to say a thousand yards was really like that was the barometer and now it's kind of like 1100, 1200. That new metric hasn't been totally solidified, but it's evolving in that direction. And the passing touchdown is evolving in that direction too. I think it used to be the three. Like if you could hit three touchdowns, you're an elite quarterback on that side. Now it's like two to three is for a good quarterback and three to four is more on that elite upside. And I just haven't seen any of that from Carr throughout his entire career, nor to the start of this hot season. He's a good player. He's going to be on your team, but I still think he's a little bit more of a, a high upside streamer than he is a solid QB one. That could change, but as of now, that's where I'm clocking him, Travi. Johnny, our friend Evan Silva over at Established to Run had a, a question about Derek Carr, if he would regress back to who he's been before or if he's going to continue this torrid pace. What we're seeing are two competing narratives. We saw... At the beginning of the year, we were like, well, the Raiders aren't very good in the passing attack. They're going to rely on Darren Waller. They don't have much else behind him. Now we're seeing that Derek Carr is spreading it around. He's got a bunch of weapons he can go to, and maybe Waller's suffering. What is the narrative that you think is more likely to continue, and how do you see this game playing out? Yeah, they are certainly getting these wide receivers more involved, which is a good thing if you're a fan of uh, the Raiders, right? Or you're the GM. You're like, my pieces are starting to do what I, I drafted them to do. And uh, and that was one of the major worries about Darren Waller coming into this season was, hey, if these guys actually start to become the draft values uh, that they were drafted at last year, what does that spell for Darren Waller? And so far, it, it has diminished his value. Darren Waller's not been the tight end that you uh, certainly draft him that we thought that he would be as well. Uh, and then you're looking at this, you know, couple of past couple of weeks and saying, is this going to be more the, the norm for Derek Carr's or are they going to revert back to where they were? And I, I do think that this is more of the norm. It's unfortunate, but it, it, it's, I mean, unfortunate for fantasy purposes and, and, um, and Waller, but I do think that he'll end up being a good tight end. Maybe he won't get that number one that we were kind of hoping him, that he'll push Kelsey for, but I do really like this matchup. LA chargers uh, giving up the eighth most fantasy points to tight end so far this season. They just let Kelsey go over 100 yards. I definitely think that Waller will bounce back. He only had seven targets in back-to-back -back games. I think that'll go up a little bit more in this game. They'll utilize him. And then as far as uh, Edwards and Ruggs, we talked about how they're really kind of stepping up and becoming better options. Uh, Ruggs, I will say, like, he's been looking good, and he seems to be the trust, uh, kind of like the new trust fall for Derek Carr. Back-to-back uh, -back games with seven targets, three straight games with over 100 air yards, sixth in yards per route um, or yards per reception with 21.5. So I do think that Ruggs is normally going to be an interesting wide receiver three dart throw, but not this week. 
because the Chargers giving up the second fewest fancy points to opposing wide receivers, believe it or not, boys. Uh, and then Edwards, again, not getting enough targets quite yet for me to want to throw him into my lineup. And then, I mean, I, your boy, Renfro, uh, probably still on your waiver wire. I, you know, again, I'm not trusting Hunter him Renfro, again. a.k.a. Yeah. Johnny without a beard. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is the guy we are, we are, you know, looking Don't at tell PPR anyone. matchups. Well, and the yeah. reason is Brandon Staley has just really schemed up some really good things. They finally put the yeah. talent together for the Chargers in the back end. That has made them, though, susceptible on the run. And I will talk about now everybody's favorite, Peyton Barber. After be being nearly dead to the fantasy football world, his career has been re resurrected. And he warmed up in week two with 13 carries and went absolutely ballistic against Miami, 23 for 111. He also added three catches on five targets for 31 yards. It's clear that Gruden wants the offense to establish the run with Thunder, whether that's Jacobs or Barber, and then the Lightning and Drake. We speak of Drake and we say, you know, he's played that Jalen Richard role of recent years because he's been sub 50% snap share in two of three games. No game with more than eight carries. Don't know why the Raiders went out and paid him so much money, but they are not using him as we thought. Barber is firmly an RB2 this week based on volume alone. Then he gets that uptick because he plays the Chargers, which are currently giving up the most yards per game to running backs. Healthy yards per carry, I guess if you're the opposing running back, at 5.1 that they surrender to running backs. And they're currently making the seventh best defense for you to target with your fantasy running back. I will go to Drake now. I think he's a PPR flex play with massive over under. Plus, Drake has never seen less than five targets and has six targets in back to back games. So I do think in PPR, Drake's still going to hold value. I wouldn't dump him in those leagues, but he's definitely not the guy we thought he could be. And in, in, in any injury case with Jacobs, it seems to be Peyton Barber could be plucked off the bench and thrown in to be an RB2. Imagine that. <laughs> we go to the Chargers side of the ball. Austin, there is an RB1 over there, top five running back in Austin Eckler. He is elite and back with us right now as that elite option. Yeah, and he's doing everything we hope to see him do after that somewhat funky week one where he didn't get a target thrown his way. Look, the last two weeks, he's got 100 combined yards through a healthy balance of rushing and receiving work, Travis. And the offense is moving, and he is a big part of of it. What I like most, though, about Austin Eckler right now is the lack of competition behind him. Larry Roundtree and Jackson have contributed, get this, 66 total yards. That's rushing and receiving all season long compared to Eckler's 279 yards. Eckler's also dominating the red zone looks at 55% of the rush attempts inside of the 20. I don't care what the advanced metrics look like for Austin Eckler. I didn't even look him up, to be honest. He's the number five <laughs> halfback in PPR. He's the number six halfback in standard, just one positional point differentiating him in a full point PPR or a standard format. The offense is moving. No one's touching his role. He's doing his thing. They're winning games. It's going to keep moving in this direction, barring health. Don't have to look up those advanced stats because Eckler is a beast. So we don't need to. He just keeps doing it. I love it. Who else is beasting right now is Big Mike Williams for the Chargers, who is a firm wide receiver ATM. one. And Johnny, you got to be happy here. You called him as a dark horse in the offseason. Is this going to continue? Can we count on BMW continuing to show up and show out here? Oh, my goodness. It's been so fun watching him break out this year. Finally, finally, we've seen what he could potentially become. And boy, is it magnificent. And I do think it's going to continue. Listen to this. Sixth in targets right now. 30.8% red zone rate, number two in red zone targets uh, for all wide receivers with eight, and 100% contested catch rate at four, which doesn't surprise me because he is a, why do we call him BMW? Because he's big Mike Williams. He is a beast. They're finally using him in the right role for what he need, what he can do and to protect his body. You know, there he's boxing players out it's fantastic it's fun to watch i do think mike williams continues this and then you know a lot of people are going to talk about um well keenan allen keenan allen is there johnny and like aren't you worried that all of a sudden keenan allen's gonna come in and and swoop in a lot of this and take away a lot of this volume and the uh he's gonna regress williams is gonna regress i, I know it i'm here to say not so fast not so fast boys and girls because listen to this while uh, BMW is sixth in targets, it doesn't matter. Keenan Allen's number two in targets. He has a higher red zone rate than 
uh, than BMW at 34.6%. He's number one in red zone targets with nine, more than BMW. And he has 100% contested rate as well, but he only has two contested catch rate or contested catches, excuse me, over four. Not the sexiest matchup on paper, but I'm staying in the flames. These boys are putting in work. They're showing out every week. I continue to have a lot of confidence, not only in Keenan Allen, but BMW, I think if people are panicking on uh, Keenan Allen because he hasn't scored a lot of touchdowns yet, I think you're going to try to trade for him because I do think that he'll get more touchdowns. But I do also think that BMW is here to stay, and I think that both these guys are going to be awesome options for you all season. And that means that they must have a really good quarterback that's going to be awesome for you all season as well. And I think that's the case with Justin Herbert, who had back-to-back sub-20-point games in Weeks 1 and 2 and then put up that 30-burger in that epic game that they beat the Chiefs in. This is one of my favorite starts of the week because, yes, the Raiders only allow 17 points per game to opposing quarterbacks, but they played Jacoby Brissett, Big Ben, and Lamar. Not exactly our cream of the crop as far as passers are concerned. None of these guys had the weapons the Chargers have, as Johnny and Austin so astutely put. And none of them are the thrower that Herbert is. Herbert's PFF's number five passer so far this year. The Chargers offense is ranked number five in passing grade per PFF. And the Chargers have the fourth highest implied team total with 28 points. There are some times that matchups look good and you should maybe – temper expectations and then there's other times you throw the matchups out sometimes it's in divisional matchups like this where the teams know each other so well and there's going to be a lot of points scored i think that's what's going to happen here and i'm excited to watch this game and i'm also excited if you whisper nation would hit that like hit that subscribe and join us over on the youtube channel and help us continue to grow this fanny fan fanny family <laughs> grow the fanny dude grow the fanny dude all right for johnny game time hicks and for austin sear I am Big Travi, and we are the Fantasy Whispers. We're out. Peace. Peace. Right here. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. If you still have a lot to say about fantasy football, maybe you want to give Johnny a little bit of crap for his take today, then go on over to our Discord channel and join the conversation there. Click the link in the description below. And if you still want more content, check out one of these videos. Homie, don't you hear the whispers?